All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and continue with our Module 1 notes. Start the same way we always do. Name and number in the top corner, please, top right-hand corner. And again, this will be our Module 1 notes. Our Module 1 notes. There we go. Today we're on Lesson 1-9. 1-9, we are adding with decimals. Adding with decimals is a lot like adding with whole numbers. We just have to be very careful with that decimal point and the decimal places. Since this is lesson 9, we'll put a Roman numeral 9, which is actually kind of like 10, but one less. One less than 10. That's going to be our Roman numeral 9. Okay. One smaller than 10. We will begin with some vocabulary. Vocabulary that I hope you have heard before and remember. I know some of these things we have already discussed, but again I want to make sure that you have it on this page to refer back to when you are doing these activities. First word we're going to talk about is sum. Sum. The sum is the answer to an addition problem. And since we're going to be adding, we're going to be talking about sum a lot. Adding, your answer is going to be the sum. You get a different response if you do a different operation. Okay. So the sum is the answer to an addition problem. Most of the numbers that we're dealing with, most of the problems we're going to work on, you're going to be writing numbers in standard form. Standard form. Okay. And this is just the common way, the common way of what you would probably consider the normal way the common way to write a number. The common way to write a number. Basically, digits only. We're not stretching anything out and writing value like we do in expanded form, and we're not going to use words or use word form. We're just going to write 115. Okay. Could be a whole number could be a decimal. Whatever it is, you're just going to write the digits. Okay, That's standard form. And our last little bit of vocabulary for today. This is... I'm going to give you a fancy phrase for a real basic thing. Sometimes in math, you'll hear us talk about using the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm. Fancy. Whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, the standard algorithm is a very fancy mathematical way of saying the step by step, step by step way to solve, to solve a math problem. The step-by-step -step way to solve a math problem or operation. The standard algorithm is what you have always done to add. Okay. I'm going to show you, but as you're getting older you're going to see different ways to do things. Sometimes you won't use the standard algorithm for certain activities. We're going to do some multiplication later where we don't use the standard algorithm. We use an area model. It's just a fancy name. Standard algorithm is a fancy name for the regular way to solve a math problem, the common way to complete a math problem. Okay. And it's what I will be showing you in Part B for today's procedure. Okay. For today's procedure. Step one. Step one. 
the first thing you're going to do when you're adding decimals is you want to write write the problem vertically vertically write the problem vertically okay. vertically means up and down write it up and down you need to be careful to line up line up the decimal points line up the decimal points what we are doing is making sure that we are lining up all of the places remember that we talked about place value all of the places the ones with the ones the tens with the tens and going into the decimals the same thing tenths with tenths hundredths with hundredths okay. we need to make sure those things are all lined up so if I have something that looks like this three tenths plus eighty two hundredths we need to line them up vertically this is the standard algorithm this is how you normally add things together again decimals make it a little more interesting you were probably taught just line everything up on the right hand side right the reason you were taught to do that is because with whole numbers you were lining up the ones place value you're the ones place column decimals are going to make it a tiny bit trickier but not much if you focus on the decimal points in fact I am going to write the decimal points in before I do anything else. See, so I've lined them up vertically, they're up and down. I am going to build the two numbers around the decimal points. 3 tenths, 0 0.3. So I build out from the decimal point. Here's a 0, here's a 3, right? 0 ones, 3 tenths. I'm going to do the same thing over here. 0 ones, I build out from the decimal. Here's eight tenths. But the two goes over here because this is the hundredths column, right? This is in the hundredths place. So it needs to stretch out. If I put the two under the three or on top of the three, I would be adding hundredths to tenths. I would be adding two things that don't match. That's your apples and oranges. I'm putting things together that are really not the same line up the decimal to help you line up the place columns so that you are combining things that are the same the same size the same unit tenths with tenths hundredths with well there might not be anything there we'll talk about that in a second but it's at least in the hundredths column okay so we've written it vertically that's step one and we lined up the decimal points that is key if you don't line up those decimal points, your problem, or rather your sum, I should say, is going to be wrong. Line up the decimal points, line up the places. Because once you've done that, you can just add as usual. Again, standard algorithm. Add the way that you always add. Carry if needed. Now, you won't always have to, but if you make a group of 10 I'll show you in a moment if you need to carry something in the next column go ahead and do that okay I'm gonna write this problem again I'm gonna start with my decimals just like I did before because I want to make sure that my ones are lined up I want to make sure my tenths are lined up I want to make sure my hundredths are lined up now the first number didn't really have any hundredths. That's okay. We remember there's an invisible zero there. The nothing, the invisible zero. We'll go ahead. We can put it in. Or not. Go ahead. Add these up. Zero plus two. Well, that's two. Three plus eight. So eight 9, 10, 11. Okay. Now I can't shove 11 in here. If I have 11 tenths, 
then what that really means is I made one hole. So I'm carrying it up here, put the other one here, because I had one tenth left over, the ten tenths come up here and make a hole, one plus nothing plus nothing is just one. Okay. Now this is going to be our step three, but I'm going to do it now anyway. You need to bring the decimal straight down. Bring the decimal straight down. And I will write that. You will write that, please, for step three. Okay. Step three. Drop the decimal point. Drop the decimal point. Straight down. Straight down. Now, this is only for adding and subtracting. When we get into multiplication and division and things like that this year, which are super fun and exciting, it will be a little different. But for this, drop the decimal point straight down. So that decimal, down, 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 straight down. Drop the decimal point straight down. And again, that three-step process is pretty much it. That's all. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. We're going to look at them together. But really, that's it. That's what you're doing. The algorithm, the standard algorithm, it's the same thing you've always done. This is probably the big change. Line up the decimal points. If you do not line up the decimal points, your answer will be wrong. If I had lined these up just on the right-hand side, this would be 0.83. It would be way too small. It would be wrong. Again, I'd be combining tenths with hundredths. I don't want to do that. This is closer to adding 30 plus 82 than it is 3 plus 82. But the decimal makes it confusing. It doesn't look that way. Line up the decimals. All right, let's go ahead, as promised, slide this up a little bit. Let's do two examples together. Okay. So for letter C, letter C, excuse me, let's do two examples. First one, let's do 25 hundredths plus 1 and 66 hundredths. Step 1. Oops, there we go. Getting low to the pay or low to the bottom here. Always go back and look at the steps. That's why we take the notes. That's one of the reasons why, anyway. Please make sure you look back. Step one, write the problem vertically. Line up the decimal point. Okay. I will go ahead and put a decimal point here and a decimal point here. That way I know I'm going to line them up. I will build my number around it. 0 0.25, 25 hundredths. 1.66, 1 and 66 hundredths. Now go ahead and add. Just like normal. At this point, you can almost ignore the decimal. Actually, a little trick. If you bring it down right now, you can totally ignore it. Because I'm done with it now. Just add this the way you would have added anything else. 5 plus 6 is 11. Carry the one, right? We made eleven hundredths, which technically means we made a tenth. Carry it over to the tenths column. One plus two is three. Three plus six is nine. Nothing to carry that time. Zero plus one is one. Now this is a lot easier if you have graph paper. We're doing it on line paper because for notes and all the writing, I think line paper is best. But if you have graph paper, this is super easy to see because if you put one digit in each box, everything stays nice and lined up. It's super clean, super clear, super straightforward. We'll talk about that and I'll show you some demonstrations in class. Let's do one more example. Let's do two and three tenths plus 10 and 7 hundredths. This one's going to be a tiny bit trickier 
which is why it's going to be kind of mean, I know, that I am going to let you do this one on your own. I want you to go step by step. Write the problem vertically. Line up those decimal points first. If you line up the decimal points correctly, then all of the place columns should be lined up correctly. Once you've got it lined up, add. If you need to carry, carry. Once you're done, make sure you bring that decimal point straight down and you should have your answer. Now, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you're having any trouble, make sure you contact me or if you'd rather, we can talk about it in class. But make sure you bring me those questions. I want to be able to answer them and practice this before your next test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that will do for now. Make sure you've copied everything down. Go back in the video if anything doesn't make sense or you need to review. And I'll see you next time.